The 15th century Renaissance astronomer Nicolas Copernicus is widely regarded as one of the most influential minds of mathematics and astronomy and a pioneer in starting a scientific revolution. His work led to a rethinking of Ptolemy's geocentric model of the universe to a heliocentric one. However, upon closely studying the writings of Copernicus, researchers have discovered that much of his work was identical to that of medieval Islamic scholars who lived a few centuries before. The most obvious evidence of Copernicus's use of medieval Islamic mathematical texts is a near-perfect copy of a statement of a mathematical theorem along with its proof, invented during the 13th century by Al-Tusi. The diagram shows what is called the Tusi couple, a theorem first stated and proven by Al-Tusi to answer the question of how to generate a linear motion from the combination of two circular motions. Some researchers suggested that Copernicus's work could be an independent proof. However, while studying Copernicus's manuscript and the original Arabic manuscript of Al-Tusi, scientist Willie Hartner, who was the president of the International Academy of History of Science, realized that the two proofs used the same alphabetic designators for essential geometric points and came to the conclusion that Copernicus must have copied from Al-Tusi's work. In his 1973 work titled Copernicus, The Man, the Work, and Its History, Hartner writes that, quote, what proves clearly that we have to do with the case of borrowing is the lettering of the diagrams found in the Tusi manuscripts and in De Revolutionibus. In both, the letters A, D, B, G, and H denote the same characteristic points. A reasonable explanation would be that Copernicus, doubtless in Italy, saw the diagram in a manuscript of Tusi's astronomical treatise Tadkira and asked somebody who knew Arabic to translate the passage for him. As elaborated by George Saliba in his book on Islamic science, quote, where Tusi's proof designated a specific point with the Arabic letter Elis, Copernicus's proof signaled that same point with the equivalent phonetic Latin letter A. Where Tusi had B, Copernicus had B, etc. Except in one case, where Tusi had Zain and Copernicus had F. The small mistranslation is easily explained by the similarity between the two letters Zain and Fa in medieval Arabic manuscripts, which, to an inexperienced reader of Arabic manuscripts, would likely have been easily misread. The nearly identical copy of the Tusi couple found in Copernicus's work suggests that Copernicus must have had access to Tusi's work in some form. Copernicus himself likely did not read Arabic, so his access to Tusi's manuscripts would likely have been indirect, with a translator interpreting the document for him. The second similarity between Copernicus's mathematics and the works of medieval Islamic scholars is found in Copernicus's use of Urdi's lemma. Urdi's lemma was invented by the 13th century astronomer and mathematician Al-Urdi. Urdi's lemma states that if two lines that are equal in length form equal angles at the baseline, then the line joining the two lines is parallel to the baseline. Urdi's lemma was used in the 14th century by Syrian astronomer Ibn al-Shatir to unify all planetary models into one geocentric format. Copernicus's use of scientific facts from Islamic scholars was not limited to these two mathematical theorems. The first connection between Copernicus and medieval Islamic scholars was discovered by modern researchers in the 1950s. In 1957, Otto Neugebauer discovered that the lunar model of Ibn al-Shatir was identical to that of Copernicus. Moreover, Copernicus used the same model for the upper planets that Al-Shatir used, with, of course, a transition from a geocentric to a heliocentric model. Thus, Copernicus also ended up using Urdi's lemna as Ibn Al-Shatir had done before him. This surprising discovery urged researchers to do further research and led to the creations of many questions that are still open. As evidence of Copernicus's use of medieval Islamic mathematical works increases, the question remains, how did this information reach Copernicus in Northern Europe? When digging deeper into historical records and archaeological finds, 
it becomes clear that the connections between Renaissance Europe and medieval Islamic texts was quite prominent. Discoveries in the Vatican vaults of both Greek and Arabic copies of Althusi's works, filled with the annotations of Renaissance scholars, suggest that Copernicus and his contemporaries had ready access to research from medieval Islamic scholars. In addition, the existence of hybrid astrolabes, which used both Arabic and Latin inscriptions, suggests an interest and appreciation by Renaissance scholars for mathematical and scientific discoveries of the medieval Islamic world. Returning to Copernicus, his clear interest in medieval Islamic mathematics characterizes him as a continuation of the Shakuk tradition, begun centuries earlier by Ibn al-Haytham. The Shakuk project came out of the critical treatment of Greek science by Islamic scholars and was begun around the year 1000. The main goal of the project was to reform and correct ancient Greek astronomy. Major contributions to this project were made by the Maraga school and the Maraga Observatory, built under the direction of Althusi in the 13th century. Researchers Neugebauer and Swerdlo suggested that by copying and using the reformed and new ideas created by the Shakuk tradition in his own works, Copernicus can be looked upon as, if not the last, surely the most noted follower of the Maraga school. And, the question therefore is not whether, but when, where, and in what form Copernicus learned of Maraga theory. While Copernicus's influence on astronomy was invaluable, he would not have been able to come up with his models without the use of previous works by medieval Islamic scholars, most notably Al-Tusi, Al-Ordi, and Al-Shatir. Decades after the connections between Copernicus and medieval Islamic scholars were discovered, many people are still unaware of this connection. Most often, the more accurate version of history with more complete info about the background of Copernicus's work is not being taught in schools. In fact, the scientific revolution had already begun centuries earlier by the reforms of ancient Greek texts by medieval Islamic scholars.